everybody and welcome to Grace for Today. It's Tuesday and it's so good to be with you. My name is Lauren and I'm delighted um, to share this teaching today with you. I just want to say before we begin that if you haven't liked us on Facebook, go on ahead, find our page and hit the like button. Or if you have us on YouTube, go and subscribe to our channel. There's also an option for a little bell icon that you can click. And that means that you can receive a notification every time we put new content up. And I'd really recommend that you do that because it will continue to provide you with really great teaching um, every time that we put it up for you. And just as we've been doing in all the weeks since lockdown's begun, we're looking again at Joseph Prince's devotional on Psalm 91. And the topic that I'm going to look at today is the Good Shepherd. The verse we're focusing on is found in Isaiah chapter 40 and it's verse 11. It says, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm. He will carry them in his bosom and he will gently lead those that have their young. This is a picture that we know and we're familiar with as God is the shepherd. We see it in Psalm 23, which must be one of the most famous Psalms that we've heard of. Um, And it's that role of a shepherd. It's interesting because their role is to keep the sheep safe. It's to guide them to new pastures. It's to make sure that no harm is coming against them. And that's what we can think of the Lord as as well. It reminds me of the verse Psalm 91 that we have looked at. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And I know that whenever I trust someone, I'm happy to follow their leading. I'm happy to go where they go because I trust them. And on that trust, we can follow their lead. And that's what we can do with the Lord today. And I just want to look particularly at parts of the Bible where there's no detail in the Bible that is there just by chance. Everything is there for a purpose. There's significance in all of the things that we read. And I want to hone in on that today. Yesterday, Adam talked about the cities of refuge. And that's obviously a place, a city that was provided for the people who needed to escape the revenge from the family if there had been a killing that had happened unintentionally. And this city of refuge was there to try and keep them safe from the revenge that was coming their way as a result of what had happened. And I find that so interesting, even after a killing, which obviously is not a good position to be in, there's a way out that the Lord has provided. And I'm going to look at these six cities and see what they mean today. The first one is Kadesh. And that means holy place or sanctuary. And we know that whenever these people went to the cities of refuge, it was the sanctuary that they went and found refuge in. The second one is Shechem. It also means shoulder. We're aware that shoulders are obviously one of the strongest parts of our bodies. And we also are aware of Shechem because that's where Jacob's well was. So we will have seen that throughout the word. The third city then is Kirjath Arba, also known as Hebron, which is a little bit easier for me to say today. And it means friendship or fellowship. We'll have maybe heard of this place before because that's where Abraham and Sarah were both buried. The next city then for us to look at is on the east side of the Jordan. It's Bazaar, which means fortress. Again, that's what's mentioned in Psalm 91 that I'd said earlier. Another city is Ramoth, and that means of heights or highly exalted. Another one, Golan, which means rejoicing or joy. And I'm not just telling you all these cities for the sake of it, I'm going to connect it together here and show you that there is significance in absolutely every place that the Lord provided as refuge. Then if we put them all together, you can find sanctuary today, Kadesh, on the Lord's strong shoulders, Shechem, which he offers to us because we're in fellowship with him, Hebron. He is our fortress, Bazaar, and he highly exalts Ramoth, us, above all of our troubles and with great rejoicing go along isn't that amazing to think that we can be safe we can be on his strong shoulders so we're not in a weak position that we can fellowship with us because he knows that's what we were made for and that we can trust him as our fortress which is a place of safety and protection and not only will we just be there but highly exalted is included as well and all of our troubles he's above them all because of the heights that he can exalt us to And we can also rejoice with them as well. So it doesn't need to be a place of pity. It doesn't need to be a place of uncertainty. It doesn't need to be a place of shame whenever we're with the Lord. He is our shepherd and he calls us to find all of these things as we take refuge in him. And we really need to remember that today. It's just so good to know that he's a good shepherd. We've heard it. We've sung it. We know Psalm 23. But this, even in a really small part of the Bible, shows us the detail provided for those that just needed a way out. And he is the one who will make a way. We sing that song, you know, Waymaker. 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And that is exactly what he is. And we can see that today, that even in the most desperate of times for these people, he is providing that city of refuge. And let us remember that today. There's safety in him, there's protection in him, there's refuge in him. And it's because he loves us and he can see us as whole and secure and safe and righteous. And that's because of what Jesus has done. So we're going to remember that today. We're going to respond as we always do. We're going to take communion together. And I look at this bread today and know that there's refuge in it. It was broken so we could be whole. We could be safe. We could be secure. We could be content because his body was broken so ours could be redeemed in that act on the cross. So thank you, Jesus, for your body broken for us. And we take the juice just that it represents the blood of Jesus. May we have joy in the fact, may we have joy in the everyday because his blood was shed for us. May we have peace in the everyday because he is the one that provides a refuge. He is that fortress that we can run to. With his strength within us, we know that we can be whole. So we thank you, Jesus, that your blood was shed so that we could be redeemed in all of these areas. We could be seen as righteous. We could call upon you as our refuge, as our help, as the one who makes a way, Jesus. And we remember that today, that in this sacrifice, all of these gifts were given to us because of the blood of Jesus. And we thank that. Thank you for that today. Amen. And that finishes up grace for today. I just want you to remember that he is the shepherd. He's the shepherd who guides us. He's the shepherd who leads us. But he's also the shepherd that shows compassion to the little sheep that may be struggling, to the little lambs that may be having a hard time. He's still very much the shepherd that can meet us in our every need, in our every stage, in our every day. So take comfort from that today, that God is good. God is for you. He does not leave, but leave us high and dry, struggling. He provides us place to place so that we can lay our head every night and know that his peace is over us. So be blessed today and may you walk in all the grace and the fullness that he has for you. He is our refuge, our shepherd, and he's not going to let us down, church. Amen.